Paul Jones Drug is Elk City's most experienced compounding pharmacy, meaning they can custom make your prescription medications to your doctor's specifications, safely and effectively providing you with exactly what you need. And for your convenience, Paul Jones Drug has a drive through pickup window as well as curbside service for testing and vaccinations and offers free local delivery. Just a couple reasons you should choose Paul Jones Drug, 809 North Main Street in Elk City. I'm Rodney Skinner with Paul Jones Drug, and I promise we provide care you can trust. If you build it, he will. It's the Skinny on Sports Podcast with Aaron Cow. I throw balls far. You want good words? Data language. Talk real sports with a real man. Come after me. I'm a man. I'm 40. Now, here's the be-all, end-all, know-it-all of high school, college, and pro sports. Aaron Skinny Count with the Skinny on Sports. We're talking about practice, man. I'm the MVP. And a good Paul Jones drug Tuesday out there, Western Oklahoma. Welcome to the Skinny on Sports right here on 98.1 FM, the sports animal. Glad to have you along for the next hour. We got all kinds of stuff. Almost in a way feels a little bit like starting this week, it's okay to start talking college football all the time. Big 12 Media Day kicking off down in Arlington tomorrow and Thursday. Then all the rest of the the conferences will follow. I think it's time. Phil Stills Magazine is out. Might be required reading for me next at the first of next week to be able to. I mean, I'm already seeing countdowns like this many more Saturdays until college football. Yeah, and you all and and you see, like, I, it's so funny you say that on Twitter. It just popped up fifty two or fifty three days until OU football, and it's got a highlight of Trey Sermon's game clinching run in Stillwater in 2017 in that wild shootout and it was a 53 yard touchdown run a lot oh, I, of, see, I see what they're doing yeah a lot of times you see the number it's you know like the it, jersey number the jersey number of somebody it's this it's so and so days until college football or until whatever team kicks off right we're getting there speaking of big 12 media days what are you intrigued by what are you wondering about that maybe you'll learn, maybe you won't over the next couple of days. What are the things that, uh, you know, you're kind of anxious, somebody you're anxious to hear from, <clears throat> try to get a sense of the mood. I mean, you know, it's like every time going out of this, oh, so-and-so's coach was so relaxed. Look out. Look out. He's excited about the, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, Or if it's. Yeah. You know, some word salad. Oh, they're anxious about their team. They won't answer the question. I mean, it's some of that stuff is a little bit ridiculous. A little overreactive. Yeah, but yeah. There, I think there are some intriguing things that are out there with four new teams coming into the league and, and all that. So we'll hit that. Uh, we'll get to the best Big 12 games. Barry Trammell ranked them in the paper over the weekend. All 105 non-con and conference games. So we've got a few questions out there such as, give me some non-conference games you're excited about. You can't say Texas-Bama. Everybody's excited about that one. Move that one off the list. What else is there? Um, What games do you think will influence the Big 12 – who ends up in the Big 12 title game the most? Uh, What are you excited to see? Are there games you're excited to see? What's an underrated game that will end up mattering? And then this one, what's a game that usually does matter that won't this year? Those are my questions there on the Big 12's games, the Big Twelve, the schedules of the Big 12 teams. All-Star game tonight, the Major League Baseball All-Star game. Is there? Can I want you to try, can you make a case for any other sports All-Star game being better than baseball? Think about that in your mind right now. So when we get there, if you just give up and say no, or if you'll try to make a case for that. Uh, home run derby last night was fun to watch. Here's a question: Do you like the newer format? The way that you know it's more of a timed event as opposed to the way it used to be. Um, home run derby versus All Star Saturday night in the NBA. 
I want to. I want you to give me. I, I thought about doing eight and eight, like you know, because they had eight guys in it last night. Mm-hmm. An all time eight guy bracket for the for the oh, Homerun Derby. But I went down to the semifinal. So just your semifinal. Your all. T- if you could just in the you know the home run derby, who would you pit against each other, and who would you have winning? And then if you can add an event to the baseball all star kind of week, would you? And if you would, what would it be? That's the questions. Two two five nine six nine eight is the phone or the text line. Chime right in with anything that uh, you guys have got on your mind about those questions or whatever else is out there in the world of sports. Two two five nine six nine eight is that phone or that text line. If you're outside the listening area, you can stay in touch with the show a couple of different ways. Log on to kadsam dot com, or you can download the Paragon app. The app has got it all. It's got the radio stations. It's got the Penny News. A brand new edition of that Penny News will hit the website tonight at midnight right there on thepennynews.com. Of course, Big Elk and Paragon TV getting closer and closer and closer to being back on the stream. Big Elk's football season starts the 25th of August down in Altus. Skinny on Sports Podcast is also available anywhere and everywhere. Podcasts are available. How are you today, Jared? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. More rain. Good grief. It rains every day here. Yep. It's like Seattle. At least it rains at night, though. And hopefully it's not noisy enough to wake you up. Oh, it did last night. That thunder. Did you get any of that thunder over here? I heard it. I heard. I saw the lightning. I heard the little thunder. I know it definitely rained. Man, it was, uh, one was, it woke me up. It was flash, then boom. So I knew it was right above us. And I wondered, did we just take a strike? Did we just get hit? But it, oh, oh, yeah, we guess it was a little, but the thunder was more noisy than the rain was for sure. Did you watch the uh, home run derby last night? Um, yeah, yeah, I had it, um, on while I was outside cooking and I, you know, paid attention to it, sat down and watched a few rounds, a couple or a couple batters and then, you know, just doing my stuff around the house. I enjoyed it. I paid, and when we sat down to eat dinner, we, we had it on and watched it. And my wife was asking me about the rules. Said, I'm not sure. I just know one guy has to hit more than the other. <laughs> I know that's one of your questions, so I like the format. Yeah, okay. You know what I don't like? Hmm. The camera angles and the way it was presented. You, yeah. What was that? I don't know. You never had any idea if they hit a home run, the, the counting clock was way behind. Whatever happened, just be behind. You know, right. Just do a normal shot. Like keep trying they're overthinking it if it's yes. like yeah just watch him hit i mean i and i get it. it it's going so much faster now than it did before because of the format because of the time that it's hard to to keep up with right mm-hmm. but man all you i mean that, that's that's part of the reason why when i ask do you like the format my answer is no because it's harder to figure out what's going on on the screen because the pitches are coming so fast, they don't have time to show the ball landing in the stands, but and then all of a sudden the crack of the bat happens again. Right. Just go back to having ten outs, hit as many as you can, and I, and I know why they did it. It has to be a TV thing so that now they can guarantee. Okay, we've got a two hour window for this thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who cares? Who doesn't want to just see more home runs or more time? Absolutely. So that was and. And of course, I mean, I saw somebody comment on this on on Twitter or on uh, Facebook last night, and I did. There was a one of the one of the the, the shaggers got smoked in the head. I saw that see, uh, right off the glove. I thought there was a little bit too many out there. Yeah, but I mean, who does who doesn't secretly when you're watching that? First off, really wish you were down there. Absolutely, how cool that would be. Now, would you be? Would you be the 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 jack wagon is why it said man if I was down there I would rob a home run I'm like no you uh, wouldn't no you wouldn't no no you I, would first no. off no first off you're four foot tall you're not jumping up over the fence and, and grabbing a home run anyway <laughs> but I mean I'm actually a little bit surprised we haven't seen Mr. Superhero Sports Guy try to scale the wall and bring one back at some point in this competition it's coming because of this world we live in where he- you do something and it'll go viral and everybody will talk about it. It's coming. Unfortunately. I think there's too many out there, though. 
That's part of the reason why I mean, it's just too many people get smoked. Exactly. Because one kid misses it and bam, right in the next kid's you, face. You, you don't need more than, I mean, think about when you're shagging balls in practice. You know, they just say, all right, remember that in the, growing up. So just go out there, spread out, shag balls. There's maybe eight of us out there. Maybe. Yeah. It's too many. And then kids are not paying attention. And Yeah. It's too easy to get distracted. Too many people trying, like, you got five kids trying to catch one ball and it misses and it nails somebody in the head or something. So, what are you, anyways, would, would you change it back to how it was? Uh, maybe it, but I, I know what you're saying. That's why they did that. They put the clock on to speed this thing up, I guess, and, and have a, a window there. Um, but it adds a little bit to it too, because you know you're talking about fatigue, and they got to slow down. They get a timeout and all that stuff. They get an extra thirty seconds at the end, and um, yeah, I I I'd maybe go back to the outs thing, so you can watch and enjoy the home runs. That was so fun back in what was that, oh eight, when it was the Yankee Stadium and and Hamilton yeah. was just going crazy. Well, you hit one, and and everybody in the stands would just stop and awe at it and then you hit another and you hit another you don't you didn't have time to enjoy the home run because you smack. didn't even know he hit smack. one last night smack. you didn't even know they got out of there i mean yeah. you, you assumed like when you saw the way that the, they you know they had the which no offense dspn but like anybody outside of a handful of people understood when they would put up the the launch angle and the ball speed, like anybody understood what that meant, right? You know, Eduardo Perez was kept on saying, "Oh yeah, one hundred three at twenty degrees. That's out of here." Okay, nobody cares. Well, everybody wants to see it. Yeah, I want to see it land in the stands. Yeah, which was way better before when it was a you know a ten out thing. But if, I, if, I love the home. Run my derby. wife asked me this question, and it was a good question. Because I've always had a great answer. I've always had this answer for it. When I'll ask you the question, what would if you could only go to one, the game or the home run derby, which one would you want to go to? Home run derby. I think we've talked about this. I would yeah. go to the home run derby. 100%. I would too. 100%. I would too. Um, if you could only do it once, I'd rather see that than the. Just because I've been to, I've been to a major league baseball game. I haven't necessarily been there, you know, when all that talent is on the field at the same time. Right. But I just like the spectacle that the home run derby is. Yeah. Compare it better than All Star Saturday Night. Hundred percent. Hundred hundred percent. I I I don't know. Maybe I'm just so put out with the NBA lately, but it seems so convoluted and and just the guys are like, ah, oh, we're here. I'm just we just have to be here, and it's more about the bling and the shoes they're wearing, and and I I just I don't know. But I've always been a baseball guy, and this has always been one of my favorite summer things is, you know, watching the home run derby and, and everything we talked about, just seeing seeing that competition. So I, I – I, and go back to the dunk contest when people wanted to be in it and then, you know, there was big names in it. Okay, so maybe uh, I should you, change this. Does this make sense where I'm going with this? Stop. Okay, so take away All Star Saturday night. Okay. Home run derby versus three point shooting contest. Because that still draws everybody. I feel like the three point shooting contest is kind of passing the dunk contest. I do too, and it and it and has interest. never been supposed. But but a big part of it is because you get to see Steph and Clay and all the the, right. the main, and you actually. You know what Isaiah Joe at the, at the last year nobody knew who he was and that's why he didn't get to shoot, but he he had such a great percentage at the All Star break. People were a little bit put out that they wouldn't let him go shoot. Well, part of it was the the big names didn't want to get beat by somebody nobody heard of. There first off, yeah, but at least those guys will participate in the three point shooting contest. Back in the eighties, when it was Jordan and Dominique and name the rest of them. That's the kind of the heyday of the dunk contest. There's no doubt it was the the, the crown jewel of All Star Saturday Night. But I, I agree a hundred percent with you. It feels like the main event now is the three point shooting contest, and I think a big part of it is there's not a bunch of people doing the dunk contest. They've changed the rules and messed it up. And they also we've seen it. 
they're kind of i mean running of out running of, out of right. uh ex, you know new dunks or whatever so that makes it, it like when jordan went from the free throw line yeah. you know, or uh when vince carter was doing his thing and all kinds of stuff when you it was the wow factor now it's kind of like well we're seeing this now he's going to tell us what he's going to do can he do it it's hard to do one that we haven't seen yeah but and it's fun though i mean we've it, seen it is, people knock down threes we've seen people hit yeah. home runs but it's like the it's just a I don't know. It's just more fun to watch it. Agreed. To me. Yeah. And it's fun when when they make it a spectacle, when they they kind of fan service the, the dunk contest that is. When Dwight Howard put the cape on and took yeah. you know, I mean that I'm like, Oh yeah, this is fun, this is fun. But but the and problem I wonder is, now if a guy when when a guy like Mac McClung wins the dunk contest, yeah. I mean does that? I mean, that's whatever. Kind of a no-name guy came in there, and it kind of made for a cool story. But at the end of the day, I'm like, as much as I loathe this guy, why? Why won't LeBron ever do the dunk contest? There's yeah. no in no universe should Mac McClung be on the same trophy as Michael Jordan. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's why it's <clears throat> kind of gone downhill. Yeah, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. I get winning the home run because of his pedigree. I can, I understand. You, you see what I'm saying? He's just feels like he's that next generation guy. Yeah, I mean, he and his dad are the first father son duo to ever do it. It's pretty cool. Okay, so speaking of Vlad, Vlad Jr., if you could create a semifinal all time for the home run derby, who would you have? Ah, uh, man. And I admittedly, I've gone back and looked back at past participants and champions and everything. Some excite you, some make, like I never knew Cal Ripken. I mean, I knew, but I always forget that Cal Ripken Jr. won a home run derby contest. Did you know that? Yeah. I mean, but as far as, you know, if I get them in their prime to uh, put them in a the semifinal, then potential final, I, you, you can't have this without King Griffey Jr. Got to have, have him in there. I'd put him up against um, uh, Josh Hamilton, and, again, in their primes. And I keep going back to their home run derby days when the, it was a show and it was it was awesome. So those two, uh, Frank Thomas on the other side versus, now stay with me here, Mark McGuire of the A's. Smash Brothers, Mark McGuire. How about you? Uh, similar but different. I would have juiced up, roided out. See, I didn't know. No, I want every bit of it. You want, you want I want the, every bit of okay, it because so that's when it was the greatest, right? Yeah, you're right. So you're Barry right. Bonds and his. Well, Mark McGuire was a little bit roided out. I think there's no at, doubt. At the A's, there's no the doubt. A's. I want Barry Bonds in his watermelon-sized head <laughs> against Mark McGuire and his. I don't know. How big were his triceps at one point? Ridiculous. Big as my thigh. R ripping, ripping the jersey off. Yeah. So I'm going to have McGuire versus Bonds in the height of the steroid era on one side, and I'm going to have um, Dark Sammy Sosa since he's not that anymore. Have you seen that poor guy? Good Lord. I'm going to have Sammy Sosa against purity, and that purity of that era was none under than the home run champion, Ken Griffey Jr. Yeah. And then Griffey beat Sosa, Griffey played Bonds, and Griffey beat Bonds once and for all to prove that Ken Griffey Jr. was the best pure baseball player of that generation, period, end of story. I don't think anyone's going to argue with that. On that oh, one. there'd be tons arguing. <laughs> I can't believe my phone's not going on. <laughs> but that's what I would go with. Cool. For the, I mean, it, because, to, and it's probably just my age, our age, but to me, those four guys were the home run derby. They popularized mm -hmm. it. They made it as mainstream as it became. You know, you think back, I mean, one, one of the most iconic things of the home run derby was Griffey hitting the building at Camden Yards, yeah. the warehouse. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, that's like, I mixed mine in with, with you. My youth was, that's. King mm -hmm. Griffey, you remember the backwards hat and the swing and all that, and what you mentioned there, or, or the Camden Yards thing. 
so that was like my earliest days, you know, my youth. And then, um, you know, obviously my passion for Texas Rangers, but that was just an all timer with Josh Hamilton at yeah. Yankee Stadium. I mean, he was, he was the out one. of the stadium. He was the one I considered to instead of Sosa. But Sosa's performance at Milwaukee, poor Bernie Brewer, his butt was sore going down the slide. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and he was also having to dodge him because he was so roided up and the balls were so juicy. He was yeah. hitting about 560 out there to left yeah. field. And, and, and then, of course, McGuire, McGuire at, uh, at Fenway in 99. He didn't win. Griffey won. But I, I think – you know, that's like the Hamilton moment in Yankee Stadium. It transcended the entire contest because Josh Hamilton didn't win. No, yeah, he didn't win it. But that's all you remember about that. That is all you remember about it. You remember McGuire hitting him over the monster by enormous m- <laughs> amounts. Right. With the, uh, with the all-century team on the field in 99, Ted Williams back inside, you know, Fenway. And he talked – Ted Williams actually talked about – it it smelled like Mark McGuire's bat was actually on fire, like it like wood was burning as he hit those mammoth shots in that in that one round uh, back there at Fenway, and of course Bonds. I mean he's you know he's Barry Bonds, so uh, that's I, I think it was pro- it's probably more of a you know uh, there's probably people out there going what about Babe Ruth? I mean yeah that'd be awesome. But I, you know, I didn't. I went with who was actually participating. You know, when yeah. I mean, to me, those I, I those get it. four create not didn't create it, but those four guys are why the home home run derby is still so popular. They popularized it. They put it in the mainstream, and so I'm going to give those guys their due. You know, the best part of last night. It didn't rain in Seattle. I don't know what. Who wasn't there? Who wasn't there? You would have loved to see someone like Otani or Mike Trout or who who wasn't there that you wouldn't. Have the did. best part of last night about it was that somebody wasn't there. Who's that? And he also helped popularize the home run derby, but to me in a totally negative way. You know what you didn't hear? Yeah, yeah. I and all know. the you stupid don't like nicknames. Em. You don't like them, I know. Thank goodness. Uh, okay. I we know didn't you. have a Chris Berman sighting. Yay. That was the best part about last night. Usher him out. Put him out to pasture. Eduardo, And here's the good news. Eduardo Perez was kind of not only the, the an, a, a, analyst, but also the translator, because tra- everybody's yeah. speaking Spanish. Yeah. So that was nice. Yeah, I was waiting for Carl Ravage to <laughs> botch another home run call. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, listen, in his in Berman's defense, that was another part of my youth that I enjoyed. That was it rings in my ear when I oh, think no about the past of home run derbies. But he, you know, he's getting up there, and and I, I get it. It's time to move on. But uh, some people don't like him. I I I as a kid enjoyed that and had fun with it when we'd go out to the small peewee fields with tennis balls and have our own home run derby and we would do that too we'd all scream it back 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 on we would do it but would you be time to move on would you be vaughn purple haze i don't understand that was one of the guys that played oh. Hector for the phillies <laughs> <laughs> he's one of the nicknames he had yes <laughs> yes no, everybody wanted to be King Griffey Jr., but no one could bat left-handed. Well, <laughs> we tried. It's just at your place. <laughs> uh, All-Star, the All-Star game is tonight. Could you? Can you even try to give me an argument that it's not the best All-Star game? No, it's the best because it's still it, they still feel like it's a pure game, like they're playing the game. The pitchers aren't taking off their pitches. The, they're, the hitters are still trying to hit it out. Unlike in the NBA, there's absolutely zero defense being played, and now we got a freaking flag football game in the NFL. This is the best All Star game. What about hockey? Out of the top three, hockey maybe. I, I don't watch enough of the hockey All Star game. All right. You know, but one speak, take- Speaking of which, hockey. I mean, we talk about skills uh, competitions and stuff. Hockey's a pretty good one with the skills competition. It, okay, so I, I skipped a question. If you could add an event to last night, would you? Yeah, sure. What maybe to last night, or, what would it be? or just in this whole weekend? Um, like maybe like a fielding competition. Like, you know, I think a hockey. You know, they put those those clay targets like in the corners and stuff that they have to hit. Maybe have something where 
shortstop have to hit a target over at first base or or a long throw from the outfield has to hit a target at home. See, I think that's I mean, you see uh, what the what the what the comp like you know, could they skip it in there? I know? would love to see the Tom Amansky drill. Remember Tom Amansky's instructional video with the crime dog Fred McGriff from our youth? I remember that, but what's the drill? You'd have you'd throw it into a trash can. Uh, like yeah, you'd have the, okay, yeah, exactly. At home, yes, yes, yeah, something like that from, from the outfield. The, exactly what kind of I something thought like that. About. I mean, here, like, here, yeah, here, maybe here. maybe incorporate like some kind of something like that, like from our youth, like stuff that we did, throwing into a trash can. Um, what was some other stuff? You know, it's kind of like backyard baseball type things, you know. I don't know, something like that, just. For, and have those guys mic'd up and they're having fun, hats backwards. Oh, don't turn eventually, their hats backwards. Eventually you have an old lady come out and yell, get off my lawn. Don't don't <laughs> turn their hats backwards. Jay Mac Opossum will get mad at him forever if you turn your hats backwards. <laughs> yeah, Will's right. We used to take the cover off and wrap the ball in electrical tape and smoke it into the houses out of Dave Macy's field right across the street from you. Probably would have hit your house numerous times as kids. Yeah. We had a yard in a neighborhood where we would play backyard baseball with a tennis ball. And there was a lady, she would sit on her porch, and as soon as that ball came into her lawn, she, she'd grab it, go inside. Oh, she'd scream <laughs> at us. Scream at us. Uh, she wasn't fast enough to get the ball, but she would scream at us. It's always those. Yeah. But no, I'd like maybe <clears throat> just to try it. I mean, you know, I think what everybody would love to see, and you mentioned hockey, and it made, this is what made me think of this question. You remember during the hockey, I, I, they may still do it, but they would have an event where literally they would see who could smash the puck the hardest. Yeah. I think people would love to see that, Like, but the pitchers don't want to do just go and throw their arm out. No. So no. you can't really have that, whereas the outfielders, you know. Maybe. I, that'd be cool. Maybe. I'll start. Okay, here's one or thing. Or have some kind of. Like a tag up competition, you have a guy, a, yeah, one relay of the or fastest something. runners. Yes, you know, get your fastest runners in baseball on third, and then see who can gun them out at home. See who can gun them out at home, or who can beat the throw. Yeah, let's not try to tag anybody in slide or whatever. No, or try to run over a catcher. Yeah, yeah this but, isn't this isn't Pete Rose and Ray Fossey, no. which still makes the, which is why this All Star game is the best because Pete Rose was willing to to end Ray Fossey's career <laughs> yeah. in the All Star game <laughs> yes. to win. The one thing that irritates me about tonight, if it happens tonight. What's that? I hate it when they make up uniforms. Just let the dudes yeah, wear yep. their uniform. Yeah. That's what looks so cool out there. You know, the American League is in Seattle, so wear your home unis, whatever your team is. And then the National League will wear their road unis but their own uniform it just looks cool out there on the field you know, once again thinking back to our youth it would look cool when junior was wearing the yeah the mariners and you had you know, mcguire with the a's and all you know the different cal ripkin had the orioles uniform on all on the same field that is that's it makes that uh to me go to a to a little higher level yeah and then the and of course Inevitably, when they make a jersey up, it sucks and it's just hideous. And you just sit there and go, "Ugh." Yeah, let them wear their jerseys. Just put a patch on their jersey or their hat or something. Just let them wear their own jersey. Just something. Just looks neater. But the game itself, but yeah, I'm gonna watch it tonight. I mean, who doesn't? It's still a baseball game. Who doesn't remember Pedro Martinez just running through? That lineup of the National yeah. League. Yes. I mean, there wasn't nothing fake about that. No, not they at weren't all. playing they tag. Weren't, they weren't pulling up. They weren't. They weren't <laughs> holding back. No. They were still it, playing baseball. It wasn't a layup line. It wasn't a flag football game. Right. It was here. It is, boys. And he just blew through the middle of that whole lineup. All right. We'll be back.
College Football Next, not a Paul Jones Drug Tuesday. Paul Jones Drug offers a free service that makes taking your daily medication safe and easy. It's called convenience packaging, meaning they can combine all of your daily medications and put them in sealed separate daily packages. This process replaces you from having to fill your daily medication dispenser. And as always, Paul Jones Drug prepares individual blister packaging for long-term care patients. With their drive through window, curbside service, and free local delivery, it's just more reasons you should choose Paul Jones Drug, 809 North Main Street, Milk City. I'm Rodney Skinner with Paul Jones Drug, and I promise we provide care you can trust. How much you want to make a bet I can throw a football over the mountains? The Skinny on Sports. That's what I'm talking about. Welcome back. Skinny on Sports, 98.1 FM, the sports animal. It's a Paul Jones Drug Tuesday. Thank you to Rodney Skinner and the gang down at Paul Jones Drug at 809 North Main, right here on the clean streets of Elk City. Paul Jones Drug is care you can trust. They are the oldest compounding pharmacy in Elk City. Free local delivery, drive through pickup, and you can get your testing curbside. You know, vaccinations, it's still kind of a thing. You can do it curbside. Also, bl- uh, blister packs. That's your long-term care unit packaging. That's Paul Jones Drug. 809 North Main, right here in Elk City. Give them a holler on the telly, 225-2121. Okay, I saw this list yesterday, which didn't get to it, Jared. And Barry Trammell ranked all 105 games on the schedule for the 14 teams in the Big 12 Conference. Question number one, do you did you scroll clear to the bottom and see what he thought was the worst one? I did. I It's... I forgot. Nickel right State here. at TCU. Yeah, that does nothing for me. Yeah. I, I can't I kind of agree with that one. Can you find a worse one? Uh, I was thinking Long Island at Baylor. And also, I wish I would have asked this question before you scrolled down there. Which was second to worst, by the way. Yes. Uh, what was the uh, mascot for Long Island? I, love, I don't know. It says it right there in the write-up. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the Sharks. The Sharks. I didn't know that one. Oh, it's cool. I'm actually a little surprised that we don't see. Oh, yeah, there it is. Central Arkansas at OSU. That's number 100. So it's like the sixth worst. You know the cool thing about Central Arkansas? Well, I'm reading the write up, so. Yeah, you, you didn't read Yeah, they play on that purple field. Uh, okay, so that's the bottom of it. There's a bunch of bad games. Yeah, there right. always is. Well, yeah. Non-conference, the the crown jewel, obviously, at least going into the season because of the the names in this game. It's Texas at Alabama. He actually ranks that as the second best game on the schedule. Um, it really is. Uh, he writes it's a no it's a uh, no win no win situation for the Big Twelve. He's tongue in cheek. If Texas pulls the upset, it's still an SEC win. I I, I actually disagree with that. <clears throat> I think that'd be a huge feather in your. It's any time you can beat Alabama, that's going to help the conference. That's going to help the Big Twelve Conference this year in an argument later on down the line if Texas beats Bama, because then anybody that beats Texas now gets to essentially beat Bama. Claim that yeah, we well, beat the team beat, that beat Bama. That's right. Yeah, that's right. So that, I I don't think it's a no win situation. I get it. He's tongue in cheek. Moving on. Outside of that one though. What are some of the other non-conference games that uh, you kind of circled uh, for whatever reason uh, in your mind that, that you're kind of excited to see what happens? Well, based on the excitement level, it's Colorado at TCU for me outside of that Texas-Alabama one, obviously. But Colorado, you know, you got prime time coming to the national runner-up. He's trying to put a get a key win to start off his career at Colorado and try to bring them back. So that one for me is uh, very exciting. How about Oregon coming to Tech, Texas Tech? Uh, two of the ones that stood out to me. Yeah, I, I, Colorado, TCU, I, I don't think it's going to be competitive. I don't, not necessarily going to matter in the grand scheme of things, but it's cool, no doubt, for, for to see what Coach Prime and the Buffaloes can do. Uh, I think that one's a, It's probably, at the end of the day, more glitz and glamour sure. than actual substance. But very, very intriguing. It, but it's really yeah. cool. It's exciting. It's intriguing. There's no doubt about that. Um, the other ones that I wrote down also, Oregon Tech. Mine had a little bit of a theme. Okay. Oregon at Tech, Baylor hosting Utah. Yeah. 
and Oklahoma State going to Arizona State. Okay. One, those could all be conference games at some point right. in the near future. Right. But number two, I, I think the Pac-12 has been kind of the whipping boy lately, when it, especially when it has come to the um, college football playoff. And the perception of that league has gone way down since, say, the glory days of Oregon. And, you know, USC hasn't been very good. That's maybe changing. But you know what I'm saying? I mean, they've been the clear – I mean, how many times have we said it on the show – going into the first weekend of the college football season, at least the last two or three years, of, boy, the Pac-12 could be eliminated from the playoff race Saturday. Yeah. And they have been. Yep. With the way it's gone. And so that that always intrigues me. But here's the thing about the Pac-12. I think it's pretty good. Oh, I've the said that too. The quarterbacks in that league. The quarterback situation is really good. Are really good. Yeah. And so – for for some teams that you're not real sure about in Tech, in Baylor, and in Oklahoma State, two of those teams play at home, Tech and Baylor, and then OSU goes out to Arizona State. Probably, I mean, seemingly a lesser opponent, right, than what Oregon and, and Utah are. I think a lot of people, you know, if you put Oregon, Utah, USC, mm, who else, kind of the favorites out, out west in some order. So from a from a perception uh, point for the Big Twelve, if you could get Texas to beat Alabama, and then you can win, say one of those two, Tech beat Oregon or Utah or Baylor beat Utah, assuming OSU beats Arizona State, that puts you on a pretty good track early on. And then the other one I wrote down is more to get an idea of where this team is. And that's BYU at Arkansas. Where I have no idea. It, it seems like most people believe Central Florida of the four newcomers is the most ready to maybe compete this year. But there's always something in my mind about those three letters, BYU. Mm-hmm. From the way that everything works out there, you always know you're going to be going against grown dudes, not kids, because of the two years that they have to go on the mission and all that. Keaton Slovis, he's bounced around a lot of different places, but he at times we've seen him be able to really sling it. That one intrigues me a lot just to see, is BYU kind of a, a – are they going to play the spoiler or try to play the spoiler at the end of the season – or is BYU going to be a team that is involved in the chase mm-hmm. for Jerry World in December? Yeah, they're they're. It's kind of like OSU. You don't really, you're not really sure about them. I mean, you can't sleep on them. There's a they're, bunch of teams like that. Yeah. So that that I totally get about BYU. Um, I'm I'm with you on the. I wrote out like five of them. I wrote, I'm with you on Utah at Baylor. And then just again, intriguing and could be fun games. Doesn't really matter at the end of the day. Uh, as far as conference shakeup or national title shakeup, but Pittsburgh at West, West Virginia backyard brawl, and Central Florida you mentioned them. They go to Boise State. I, mean, I don't know Boise State. They haven't been Boise State. Those team that team that could that beat in Oregon and beat in Oklahoma and be, you know playing with the big boys and actually beating them. But it is at Boise State and it's early in the year. So and you mentioned Central Florida could be that team that one of the best of the new four. That might actually have a pulse. So, we'll see what happens there. It's kind of a long road trip for them. Yeah, the, maybe the most boring non-conference game liable to be Iowa at Iowa State. <laughs> <laughs> Seven to five final or yeah, something, something like, that. like that. Yeah. Um, which game or games do you think end up influencing who plays in the Big Twelve championship game the most? Uh, OU Texas. It kind of feels like whoever can win that game especially OU if they can win that game they they should be favored in every game after that and they could have an inside track to get to the title game Texas too if they even lose that game can still navigate their way back that game feels like it has big implications for a big 12 title and maybe more yeah I mean it's it's the biggest game for Oklahoma always is but 
especially this year. Because of the way the schedule shakes out, you don't play K-State, you don't play Baylor, mm-hmm. you don't play Tech. So you've got the tie break over Texas, essentially a two-game lead over them with that win. Texas, on the other hand, they can they can bounce back from it. They go to they play K State. Yeah, that was like my second one. Yeah, Texas and Kansas State, I think, is a huge. Obviously, Trammell's got it number one, and a big part of it is because those two teams were picked atop the conference. Um, it, it, it's definitely going to influence the Big Twelve t- title chase, uh, barring injury. Um, TCU and Kansas State. I think it's another one that's definitely going to do that. You know, for mm-hmm. f- especially on the K State side of things, uh, because I'm not I'm not much of a. I mean, he's got TCU uh, in a bunch of these games. I'll have to. I, I just. I, I don't know. I, I'll have to see it before I believe it. With them, with what they lost. <clears throat> Which game are you most excited about outside of OU Texas? You can't say that one again. In no particular order. And if everyone stays healthy, I think Kansas State at Kansas could be a fun one. A rivalry game. Um, you got the preseason quarterback or uh, offensive player of the year over there at Kansas. And then everybody, you know, Kansas State's not coming in as this overlooked underdog. You know, they're going to kind of have a target on their back. And KU would love nothing more than uh, – and I, they play in November. And if, if everything's working for both teams, they would love nothing more to spoil – their Big 12 title hopes or, or more. That one intrigues me. And then, of course, Bedlam. I mean, it, it, the last one for the foreseeable future. You know, the emotions will be running high, and it's in still water. It's going to be nasty, and that one always excites me. But this one, this time, it excites me a little more. Yeah, Bedlam for me because it's a, <clears throat> what we think will be the last one for a while. And, and I and I like that it's in still water. Yeah. I really do. I, I just think if there was going to be a last one, it's kind of a little bit like uh, Texas and Texas A and M. The last one they played when A and M left was in College Station. I think it's just it, it it's better that way. Yeah, it's de- it's definitely Bedlam and Stillwater for me. It's the nation's longest uninterrupted in-state rivalry <clears throat> until you know next year. Give me one game that's underrated that you think will really matter. Kansas State at OSU. Ooh, I thought you were going to pick the same one I did. No, I think um, that could be a, a game where Kansas State comes in. You know, there's something about Stillwater. They get them like on a late afternoon or evening. That yeah, it's that like 6:30. That, that could get them. So it's at 6:30. <clears throat> there mm-hmm. you go. Never easy to go to Stillwater. And uh, Tech at Texas. Put- Say for kind of the same <clears throat> scenario, I think. Tech could come in. I kind of switched around, though. I think Tech can come in, and they beat them last year. They're not afraid of Texas. I think McGuire's got their attitudes kind of changed a little bit where they don't care where they're at. I mean, they'll go to Austin and give Texas a run. I picked uh, Kansas State at Tech. It's the week after uh, yeah, there OSU. You go. Oh, and by the way, this is something that I had forgotten. Not only is that game in, st- the game in Stillwater is on a Friday. That Can- Kansas State Kansas one? State at OSU is that's Friday. Right. That's why it's a six thirty. It's a six thirty Friday game. the The Friday of OU Texas week. That's right. Yeah, it's a Friday. Um, if you look at Kansas State's schedule, at Texas is clearly the toughest game. You mentioned the at Kansas one. We'll see how that shakes out. But man, their their conference schedule hosts UCF, at Oklahoma State, at Tech. TCU at home, Houston at home, at Texas, host Baylor, at Kansas, host Iowa State. If they get through those back-to-back road games unscathed in Stillwater and in Lubbock, they're certainly going to be in the mix. And I picked Texas Tech because it's the second one of the back-to-back. That's the only reason why. Okay, which game that usually matters – when with the uh with the context of the Big 12 title game on the line which of those games that normally matters will not I think how you feel about TCU is how I feel about Baylor so I said Baylor versus TCU is that a game this year Oh darn I just shut it down 
I just assumed it was because it's more or less a rivalry game. Yeah, surely that. I thought I did my homework, but I guess I didn't. I'll look. I'm scrolling down. Huh. Doesn't look like it. No, yeah, there it is. is. It there is. it is. It's on November 18th. Oh, uh, you know what that is? What's on November 18th? Jared. This is disappointing. Oh. It's my birthday. Oh, I'm sorry. Happy birthday. Thanks a lot, Jared. On November 18th. <laughs> uh, this, the answer I'm going to have isn't going to make anybody happy. I'm excited to see it, but Bedlam's not going to matter. By November 4th, I don't think it's going to matter. Nearly like it normally does. Because of one team's record versus another, or because of both teams just I don't, kind of already out of it? <clears throat> I don't I, – I, it, it's not – I don't think OSU is going to be very good. Well, let me tell you something. It'll matter to OSU. Sure it will. No matter what their record I mean, is. I mean, <laughs> in, like, oh, this is a semifinal. Type. I mean, you know, like, yeah, I understand Like, you saying. could see, like, OU, TCU, the way they set up the schedule on that Black Friday. Oh, the winner of this plays so-and-so in the conference championship game. I don't think there's the hype for Bedlam is going to be near like that. The hype is going to be only that this is the last time that they're going to play. Yep. Just the way, I don't know, it's the way I feel. But – if Mike Gundy's talking about rattlesnakes and that kind of stuff down there at Big 12 Media Day, all of a sudden he feels good about his team, so get ready. <laughs> that doesn't have anything to do with being an OU fan, AJ. They have no quarter. They, I mean, Alan Bowman is the savior? No. Nah. Afraid not. We'll be back. Paul Jones Drug is Elk City's most experienced compounding pharmacy, meaning they can custom make your prescription medications to your doctor's specifications, safely and effectively providing you with exactly what you need. And for your convenience, Paul Jones Drug has a drive through pickup window as well as curbside service for testing and vaccinations and offers free local delivery. Just a couple reasons you should choose Paul Jones Drug, 809 North Main Street in Elk City. I'm Rodney Skinner with Paul Jones Drug, and I promise we provide care you can trust. If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. The Skinny on Sports. Oh, oh. Welcome back. Skinny on Sports, 98.1 FM, the sports animal wrapping up a Paul Jones drug Tuesday. Paul Jones drug, you know, the coolest thing, we always mention it each and every week, is the convenience packaging. You throw away your pill caddy. You don't have to load it. You don't have to make sure that you've got the correct amount of pills in the correct day dosage all that kind of stuff you don't have to worry about you you know who mr gower is mr gower yes no mr gower was the druggist in it's a wonderful life oh okay george bailey saved from himself you don't have to worry about a slip up like that on your own they do it for you. They they have the individual packaging of your daily meds. They know exactly what you need, when, what day you need them. Just rip open the package and take them. That's all you got to do. It's a great, great thing down there. DME, which is durable medical equipment. Most insurances are accepted. And, oh, by the way, it's not just the medical things. They got a bunch of cool gifts, a bunch of cool greeting cards as well down at Paul Jones Drug. Reminds me, I got a, a week until a a birthday, so I need to go get a card for a certain someone. Your wife? That's right. And recommend more than just a card. I got something coming. If I were you, it's kind of difficult this year because we're going to we're going to be in Florida on her birthday, so I got to make your sure. birthday's coming up, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's in this month, isn't it? It is the twenty sixth. That's right. Yeah. Do we need to paint the studio black for that day? Mm, no. The we, big 4-0? No, we don't need to remind everybody about the that one. Big we can we could we could forget about this upcoming birthday. Oh, we won't I'm, let you. No, I'm trying to. Uh, August 5th, that's a weekend. I know this date. It's a Saturday, isn't it? It is. I know. I'm going to a family reunion instead of playing in the Quail Forever golf tournament or the alumni golf tournament here well that's actually the weekend i'm celebrating my birthday i'll be, is it really? I'll be down in arlington uh, at a ranger game 
I'll be at Fort Cobb Lake. Very good. Anyhow, but we'll get we'll we'll play the minions for AJ the happy birthday. We'll do that on the fourth. <clears throat> that's right. We'll mix in a little boomer sooner in there for you. Yeah, <laughs> that's what we need to do. We need to figure out a way to uh, make the minions say happy birthday and boomer sooner. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Oh, Jared. That was funny. Okay, Big 12 Media Days uh, tomorrow and Thursday in Arlington. What are some things that, <clears throat> I mean, it, it's not like we're going to have these gigantic revelations of secrets from the coaches or what have you. It's just not ever the way it is. You're going to get those normal answers. We had a good off season. We're looking yeah. to bounce back. We, I'm lo- really looking forward to this guy's progression, and I think we got a good – you know, you're going to get those answers. It's it's almost the same every year. So, Sometimes you get some good sound bits from some somebody like Gundy or something. You know, maybe Holgerson. That's interesting. He's back in the conference to hear, hear his take and stuff like that. But more or less, you always get those coach speak answers. Is there somebody you're excited about hearing about? Hearing about or hearing from? Hearing from, hearing about. Oh, just Gundy, like I said. He's, you know, get the popcorn ready. You know, last year he had opinions about OU in Texas, how they shouldn't basically even be there and they shouldn't be in part of the business and all that stuff. So I, I wonder if he's still on that or uh, anything else. You know, he's always good for something every year. Um, Like I said, Holgerson's always fun. I feel like he's kind of losing passion. I don't know. I like to see if there's that passion, that fire is still there from him. That's really on my mind. And then, you know, the the, the favorites, you know, they're not fun to listen to or on the podium like Sarkeesian or, or uh, you know, Kleiman maybe. But just to hear their approach coming in to this season. If it changes any bit, any bit, knowing that those are the two favorites to get to Dallas or excuse me, Arlington, in December. So, but as far as, as, far as soundbite material and off the cuff fun quotes, you can almost guarantee you're going to get one from Gundy. Yeah, there's no doubt he's the star of this, right? Yeah. I mean, he's the elder statesman in the conference, and he's the most. He he feels like the one that's the most comfortable in this setting there's it's, almost and i'm not saying this aj to rile anybody up but there's almost an arrogance to it he's like okay i've been here it's great I, yeah i like it i do i like it he's not speaking he's not the coach speak like we just talked about no you know? he's you get, not scared of his president he's not scared of his ad he can just he kind of just says what he wants because he kind of feels untouchable i think which is what we've always you know you're not. He's not going to get fired. He's the greatest, the most winning, the winningest coach they've ever had. No, no. He's he's for sure the star of this thing. Yeah, and has been for a while. Um, and that's a good thing. No, no. He he gives. He he's the one guy. That that you feel like when he's answering a question. He's really thinking about the answer. In a way that would that helps whoever asks the question to write their story. Like he's really trying to give an honest, thought out answer. And it, but it doesn't. <laughs> the, the the thing about him that makes him the star of the show is that he also does that on silly questions. To where next thing you know, he's told he's talked for four or five minutes about the intricacies of who knows what whether it be farming or rattlesnake hunting or or whatever it is and the truth of it is it's genius that he does that you know why because then he doesn't have to set up there and give a bunch of coach speak answers for 30 minutes because he can rattle on for 15 about something totally off the cuff totally out uh, off the subject of football and therefore, he doesn't have to give you those, oh, yeah, we've been working hard. Uh, we're excited about Alan Bowman, blah, blah, blah. You know, he doesn't have to give you that because he is well thought out enough on the other answers to where he keeps you kind of entertained. There's no doubt he's the guy, in my mind. Um, outside of him, maybe you know some of the newcomer coaches, I guess. I, I wonder how, how does Kansas uh, how, not handle themselves, but – there's a totally different spotlight on Kansas mm-hmm. at this thing than there has been since Mark Bangino was the coach. 
Right, yeah. You know, it's not the, oh, dear God, we got to talk to Kansas now. You know, yeah, there's there, some interest there. there. There's no doubt about that. And so tomorrow, it is Baylor, BYU, Houston, Kansas, Oklahoma State, TCU, and Texas. And then on Thursday, UCF, Cincinnati, Iowa State, Kansas State, Oklahoma, Texas Tech, and West Virginia. I mean, I, I don't, I don't get a whole bunch out of, you know, getting asked about players because you're. You, you're, that's all you're going to hear. I mean, the, the the one thing that would come out of this is if somebody asked a coach about a certain player and it was negative, right? Mm-hmm. Like, how's those so – like, Deshaun McCullough at OU. How's he been looking in, in your in your summer and spring and leading into fall? Ah, not as good as we thought. <laughs> you know, they, that's when – that's that, that would be answers that make waves. Um, you know, is Quinn Ewers coming around like you thought, Sarkeesian? Eh, maybe not. We might have to look at the backup here. Uh, you know, start the Arch Manning hype train or uh, Malik uh, Murphy. Yeah, everyone's going to be looking for that angle too with Texas. Uh, the, I think the big question is um, expansion, potential expansion. See, that's that, that's where I was going last on this. And the truth of it is outside of uh, – Gundy's the, the guy, but the one person that's going <clears> to <throat> be the, the star of the show – nationwide is going to be Brett Yormark and right. what and yeah. what he will or won't say or how his reactions are about the questions that are for sure to come regarding expansion right what can he say what can he say what say, will he say yeah, yeah we're aggressively looking but can't tell you who you know, there's been rumors, da da da. You know, last year, what was it? The the quote was, uh, "The Big Twelve is open for business." Mm-hmm. Was was what kind of sparked everybody's interest in in what that meant? And yeah, I I, I think that uh, I completely agree about that. That he's one of those. He's going to be the guy that nationwide is what everybody's looking for. And what does that mean? Who is it? Who could it be? That kind of thing. Right. Starts tomorrow. And you know what's exciting to think about? They're the only show in town. The only show in town. (laughs) They're the only thing happening. Yes, because tomorrow is the worst day in sports. There's nothing happening. There's not a game. No baseball. The only thing that's going on at Wimbledon is going on, but that's across the pond. Right here in the U.S. of A., there's not a game tomorrow. It's the dead day. Yeah, that was brilliant on the Big 12's part. I would agree. They wanted to be the only show in town. I would agree. So, thank you to Rodney. Paul Jones yep. Drug. Oh, by the way, don't forget... Got a couple of days still. Registration open for the Elk City Tackle Football Camp. It's coming up on Saturday, ages 3rd through the 12th grade. Elk City Youth Tackle Football. Find them on Facebook. That's where you sign up for that camp. It's 9 to 4 Saturday. And, oh, yeah, OU players will be there to help with the instruction. Danny Stutzman. Marcus Stripling, General Booty, Tawee Walker, Justin Harrington, Key Lawrence, Jalil Farouk, Andrew Rame, Jonah Leulu, Reggie Grimes, Kevin Gilliam, Weatherford Zone, Ethan Downs, and Jackson Arnold. All will be in the house, Big Elk Stadium on Saturday. Elk City Youth Tackle Football on Facebook. Look it up. You can sign up that way. Wraps up a Paul Jones Drug Tuesday. Thanks again to Rodney and the gang down at Paul Jones Drug at 809 North Main. Paul Jones Drug is care you can trust. Everyone have a great Tuesday. All-star game tonight. I have to find something to talk about tomorrow. Talk about the game. I'm going to do a little research into the Northwestern goings-on. Everybody have a great Tuesday. You've been listening to the Skinny on Sports Podcast with Aaron Cow. Be sure to hit that subscribe button to get alerts of when the latest podcast is available. Thanks for listening. That ball is blistered to right. Way back goodbye. 
Paul Jones Drug offers a free service that makes taking your daily medication safe and easy. It's called convenience packaging, meaning they can combine all your daily medications and put them in sealed separate daily packages. This process replaces you from having to fill your daily medication dispenser. And as always, Paul Jones Drug prepares individual blister packaging for long-term care patients. With their drive through window, curbside service, and free local delivery, it's just more reasons you should choose Paul Jones Drug, 809 North Main Street, Milk City. I'm Rodney Skinner with Paul Jones Drug, and I promise we provide care you can trust.